Today we're going to be continuing on with the material we started in class yesterday on mutations. If you remember, a mutation is a permanent change in an organism's DNA. And when we were together yesterday, we talked about point mutations, which are a class of mutations where there's a problem with a single base. That single base can be swapped for another base. We can have a base removed completely or another one added in. And depending on the location of that base, there can be different effects on the resulting protein that comes from that gene. Today we're going to be talking about chromosomal level mutations, and these involve entire regions of a chromosome so they can involve whole arrays of genes. We're going to talk about chromosomal inversions, chromosomal duplications, chromosomal deletions, and chromosomal translocations. A chromosomal inversion is a chromosome mutation where a segment of the chromosome, a whole piece of the chromosome, breaks off, flips over, and then reinserts in the same place where it broke off. The result is that that region of the chromosome has now been flipped 180 degrees. And if you look at the picture on the slide, you can see what, that what this does is reverse the order of the genes. Now you might ask yourself, why would that matter? And the reason is, depending on the location of the inversion, there are some segments of DNA that were intended to um, adjoin one another. Remember, a gene contains not only a coding region for protein, but also regulatory regions. And if those get out of order, then the transcription and translation of that gene will be affected. A chromosomal deletion or duplication is pretty self-explanatory. This is a, a type of chromosomal mutation where a segment of the chromosome is literally duplicated when the DNA is synthesized or replicated. The other thing that can happen in a duplication deletion event is that the whole gene segment can simply disappear. It can be removed and not replaced. Now, this would have obvious implications. If you took out a whole segment of the chromosome, all of the genes in that segment would be gone and whatever proteins that they would uh, that would come from those genes would be gone as well. Having a piece of the chromosome duplicated might not seem to be a bad thing at first glance. After all, we haven't changed the order of the bases. The genes are in the right um, location, and it doesn't seem like it would make that much of a difference. But when you duplicate a whole set of genes, what you've done is you've set up the chromosome to make twice as much protein as it used to make. And depending on that protein, that can have a real effect on the organism. A chromosome translocation is very similar to an uh, inversion event in that a piece of chromosome is going to break off. In fact, pieces from two different chromosomes are going to break off. And those chromosome pieces are going to reattach, but they're going to reattach on the wrong chromosome. So, as you can see in the picture on this slide, um, if a segment of the chromosome 4 in green breaks off and a segment of chromosome 20 in red breaks off, and then those segments reattach on the wrong chromosome, you've now moved genes, whole regions of genes, from one place to another. They're now next to genes they were never intended to be next to, and that can have a tremendous effect on the transcription and translation of the proteins that come from those genes. So we have different kinds of mutations that are affecting cells. And as we said in class, these mutations are occurring during the time when cells are dividing, during the time when DNA is being replicated. We're going to talk about mitosis in the upcoming week, but this is a process where the uh, contents of the nucleus are being doubled as the cell prepares to divide so that each new cell gets a full copy of DNA. Cells divide at different times during an organism's life, but the consequences of mutations have 
the most impact in a very specific type of cell. If we look at an organism like a human being, we can describe two very different cell types in that organism, somatic cells and gametes. Somatic cells are the cells that make up the body proper. So these are the cells that make up things like an organism's skin and the organs inside, the liver, the kidney, and so on and so on. Somatic cells are the cells that divide and grow with you as an organism, that repair themselves when they get damaged, but these are cells that are going to live with you as an organism and then die with you when you die. Your gametes are very different. Your gametes are your reproductive cells or your sex cells. So if you're a male, you have sperm cells as gametes. And if you're a female, you have egg cells as gametes. Gametes are very unique because gametes are literally going to become the basis of a brand new organism. And this has huge implications if a gamete experiences a mutation. So if a somatic cell experiences a mutation during the time that the DNA is replicated, that mutation is going to be passed on to the next generation of those cells. For example, if you experience a mutation in a kidney cell, that cell is going to pass that mutation on to the next generation of kidney cells that get made. This mutation, therefore, is going to stay in that one individual organism. Now, don't get me wrong, it can be very serious. This is the basis of cancers, for example. But the consequences are only on that one organism, the organism that experiences the mutation. In contrast, if that same individual experienced a mutation in its gametes, in a gamete cell, that gamete cell is going to be the basis of a whole new organism. So let's say uh, an adult male, for example, experiences a mutation in a sperm cell, and then that sperm cell is used to fertilize an egg cell and create an offspring. That means that that mutation in the sperm cell is now in the cells of the offspring. And the consequences have a much more uh, severe impact, evolutionarily speaking, because this is how new traits get passed down to um, resulting offspring. So stay tuned for next week where we're going to talk about mitosis, this very complex set of uh, reactions that occur in a cell when the nucleus is dividing. And we'll talk a little bit more about how mitosis is a key event in um, the life of a cell and also in perpetuating mutations.